Okay. So when you first installed your program and you open her up, this is what you're going to see. Now you want to create a picture. Perhaps you have a coloring book picture. Some people say coloring book picture works better for them. Personally, I didn't start off with coloring book pages. I found clip arts work the best. Good, clean clip arts. Doesn't matter if they have color or not. But it's your choice, whatever you wish to start with. Photographs are always the hardest. And I wouldn't recommend starting off with photographs until you get a little more experience with those. They're not easy. Anyways, let's start off by going to File, and we're going to Import. Click on the Browse, find whatever picture you want, locate it on your computer. If it's on your desktop or if it's you know anywhere else in your C drive, just maneuver to it until you find it, and then open up your picture. Just click onto the picture you want. Now what I like to do is click on preview, right click, you right click with your mouse, you get your menu, and you click on preview. This opens us up a preview, like here. This way you can have it for future references, for working on your pattern if you need it, and then I just move it over to the side. Now we click on open. Here we have our picture started. And then just keep clicking next. And into the screen, if you want to remove features of it, you can use this to do it. I never do. If the picture is too big or if I want something removed, I always remove it in a program outside of this program before I bring it in here because this program is actually very limited. Anyways, we click next. We click on stitches. I prefer working in stitches than inches. That's rather small. The picture could easily enough be done in a small one if a person wanted to just by looking at it. But for the heck of it, let's just say we're going to change it up to like 79 to width. And that gets us a height of 83. Change the values to whatever you want. Main text teen aspect ratio that keeps it, I like to keep that always checked. Now the smooth, smoothing the colors, sometimes I actually remove that and sometimes I don't. Smooth colors is probably the best thing to do. Then we go next. The picture looks good, it doesn't need to be brightened or fixed. You can do a lot of different things in here. You you can mess with those, see what you get, see. And then, then if you do decide you want to keep that, you have to click apply. If you don't click apply, then it will default back to this picture. Anyways, I don't want to apply that. I just wanted to show you. So next off, we'll click next. Now in here, you're going to pick your yarn family. I prefer, and most people like to prefer, working in red hair. Now, for a while, I, I, I did click, I did use your JP Coats, I think it was, is the one I used, but I, I've turned to using Red Hearts because Red Heart is the most popular yarn that people use. So I use Red Heart. Now it's automatically set for a value of 50 colors, but as you can see, this dog does not have 50 colors in it. And it'd be just more work for you to have to remove those 50 colors. And it will put 50 colors in the pattern if you tell it to. Let's click Preview anyways. It looks good. Looks good. Now there it doesn't look like it's using 50 colors, but if we click finish, trust me, it will come in with 50 colors. So what I usually do is take the picture, which here it is, we'll bring it back in the screen. Take a look at the picture, give yourself an idea of how many colors is into it. We have the white background, the black trim, with the brown here, the pink nose. So we're looking at one, two, three, four colors. Uh, with the top here, so that would be five colors. So we'll move this back out of the way. And we'll try it and see what it looks like at five colors. Preview it. Looks really good. So it looks like we can continue that along. Now sometimes you can put four colors in and it just don't come out right. If it doesn't, then just keep adding a color. Put six preview. Doesn't still look right. Put seven preview. 
8 preview, and then just pick whichever one looks the best. And now, since this looks good, we'll click finish. Now let's draw it up in here. Now let's go up here to the uh, size and let's choose fit to, to fit, which will fit your screen. And there's the picture. Now what I like to do is, is I usually work from here, but I guess some people just click this and it, it, they both bring you the same thing. It brings up your color palette. Color palette. If you click this, what I do, which is the way I'm going to work since it's the way I prefer, but you choose whichever way you prefer here or there. I right click on this and just play the color palette. And now the first thing I usually do in most every picture is I like to remove the background color. I don't like it. It doesn't look very professional. It doesn't make as clean a picture. I remove it. It's the first thing I do in most every picture is I remove it. Then we click close. Now this is what we have left. Now there is these extra colors here that were really not needed. They kind of mixed them up and scattered them. If you look close, you can see like these colors should have been, shouldn't have been here. We don't really need them. So instead, of, in this particular picture, it's rather easy and maybe a quick fix, being as the way it pulled in. Some doesn't pull in so easy as others. So what I'm going to back do is go back and display the color palette. Now in here, I'm going to take all this dark brown color. And I'm going to pick up the dark one, and I'm going to move it over top of this one, and let it change it all. Now I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to see if it looks all right. And it does, so great, that just took care of a bunch of colors. Now the next, what we're going to do, would be probably, we need to go in, and we need to remove these colors. Sometimes just simply removing this good idea. Other times just darken them up to the color that's associated with them. It could be dark brown. But I'm going to just remove them. Now here if you look in the picture you see you have in, in the, the picture here you see you have a, a, a dark outline with the lighter brown inside and yet it all came out the dark brown. Well, if you like it, you can just leave it the way it is. If you don't like it, then just go back, right click on it and bring up your color palette, go down through and find maybe perhaps another color that you would like to put in there. Let's say we're going to, we have here, we have warm brown, let's put uh, mid brown. Let's add the palette. Close. Now you click on it and highlight it. Make sure it's highlighted so the color you're working on too. And then what you do is just go through and change all the patterns. But leave your outside ones. Prefer to leave your outside ones if you, if you want a, an outside darker trim, which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. All depends on the picture and my mood is the way I do really. And then you just change all of this head color. And if you need to refer to your picture, and just go back and bring your picture up. There he is. <coughs> Excuse me. And there he has more like the picture. If that's what you like. Now here he's got little roly polies in, so you can always go back in and like, bring a few colors to make it look like he's got little indentures down. Now if you want to view your pattern, you can just, you know, get to it. And you can have a better look and see how the top is coming along good. Some people like stick outsides, some people don't. For 
personally, I prefer the one one layer outside, but some things it looks good to leave them on. It's really your choice. Now you can also go up in here and click view the pattern, which right now is not very dark or, or bright living colors, but that's got to be because of my choice of, of selection in my setting, which we'll delve into later on. But that's another way of previewing it. And down here, you right click. You can also choose how many rows you want to do it. Let's click on two rows. That brings it up into two rows. Uh, just play one row. Or if you want your block size, you want small, medium, or large. See how it makes them large, medium, whatever. I like it large because I'm fast blonde. And uh, these, as you've seen me use, they go this comes in, this comes out. Now I've zoomed to the previous settings. I already ever use that. If you want to add text, this leaves your cut marks for if you want to leave cut cut lines. It's just an idea to show you what they do. This, if you want to move the section of your screen, then you can move it. <laughs> Which we don't want to do that. You have one undo, so you can always undo it and let's put it back. And these cut lines, of course, we don't need anymore. Now let's see another thing. You'd like to have, let's say, your you want the picture bigger. After you've worked onto it and you need more room, you want to extend it. Bigger. Say the ears are cut off and you'd like to extrude it over more or down below a little bit more. But you go, how do I do that? Well, let's go up to Tools, Pattern Info, and in here it will tell you the width and your height. 79 width, 83 height. Now, let's change the values and let's say we would like to have 100 width. And a hundred height. You can change one or you can change them both. Then you click OK. And now you've got all this extra space. This is where moving the pattern comes in handy. You just and drag it down. Like so it's just lined up on the outskirts of your picture. Now you can move the picture. So you see? We've got it now more centered up. However you need, whichever way you need room, if you need more room up top, and of course you're moving down or over this side or this side, however you need. That's a pretty good feature. The same thing goes as if you have a picture and you end up making it smaller than you have on the screen, so you want to take away the extra, or well, you just Take a picture of the guy, like I'm doing here. Make sure you get your palette lined up right. And move it up to the top corner. Then you go back in your tools, add an info, and then just start hacking away. And let's take, let's say 80. With a height of 90. I forget what the settings were before we did this, but let's just say we'll Click in and go yes. And there you have it. Now you can see right here, you can see we've got one more line here and there's still quite a few here. So we'll just open it up again, add an info. The width, we need to take one more off, so that would be 79. We still have a few more down here, so let's say it looks like probably about 85. We'll try that and click OK. Perfect. Still need two more, looks like. So we'll go back and do the same thing. So it'll be 83. Okay, 83. Perfect. Now it's perfect for saving. Of course, we haven't finished this pattern, but the idea is there you would continue working it, or you can save it for a later date. Anyways, that's it for this lesson.